Petra, I'm curious, uh, we're used to traveling all the time and then suddenly travel has become this big thing. And, and I'm wondering for you, did you have any sort of anxieties or concerns about getting back on a plane or getting to travel again? And uh, yeah, I'm just curious, did, did, did it come through your mind at all when you were taking the decision to, to play that, do I want to be around people again or not? Or, well, I wouldn't say I had anxiety. It's just that I felt like I kept my distance from people so well. So I thought, okay, you know, I, I did my part really well. And now if I get on a plane and I get this, <laughs> there's going to be some real bad luck. So that was a concern I had. But it's, it's out of your control and you have to decide for yourself whether you take the risk or not. So, but I feel like even at the airport, it's still not that many people, so that's good. And even those that there are, they also don't feel like being close to you, so that helps as well. And we've, we've just heard news that there's a positive test at the tournament from one of the players and she had to withdraw. I'm just curious for you, what's the, what's the reaction for you to know that already in, in a, in a small-ish field compared to a slam, there's already a positive test? Uh, to be honest, uh, I heard the news as I was walking into this room. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I, I still didn't make up my mind about it. I don't know who it was. But uh, all I know is that they, they kept her in the room and she hasn't really been in contact with anyone, which is really good and really important. And uh, that definitely helps. I mean for us also to feel better or feel safer. You mentioned the bubble and the US Open and how important it is to, to keep the bubble secure. Uh, as we've seen, there have been examples of people who don't necessarily follow the rules or there could be exceptions. We've seen it even with different sports. So I'm wondering, where do you stand on uh, where, how these rules are going to be enforced. Do you think it ju just should be like an honor system and, and you trust that everyone will do it or should there be punishments and fines and stuff for people who break the rules of the bubble? Well, from what I know and what, from what they told us is that if you don't follow the rules, you can actually be suspended or just not allowed to play. So that's actually i think it's good because uh we all depend on each other and if one i don't want to pay for someone else's mistake and i think that's fair whoever doesn't follow the rules should yeah should be punished accordingly so if that's the case then once again i feel safe and if we see that someone is not following the rules so we can just contact wta and let them know who it was so I think that also makes players who are not willing to maybe cooperate, maybe they're going to be a bit more motivated after that. So, yeah, I really hope that uh, we are all going to be smart about it now that we got a chance to be here and make this thing happen. Well, how confident am I? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not confident at all. <laughs> I can only speak for myself, right? And uh, I know I'm going to follow the rules and that's all I can control. Uh, after all, I really hope that everybody else missed tennis and I hope this was a long enough warning that, okay, if we are not being smart and disciplined about it, we're going to go back to, I don't know, cooking or staying home, what we did <laughs> the whole year, basically. So if that's not a good enough reason or motivation for people to follow the rules then then i really don't know what is let's hope for the best um i'm curious if you look at the field now it's obviously all european and as you mentioned a lot of the decisions that are being made are based on where you're from uh, how do you feel about the idea that perhaps for for a while the the tour is almost going to be regional if we're not talking about the slams if we're talking about the, and even with slams uh, how does that feel? Does it take you to a different time when you were young and playing European juniors or something? Or does, do you not feel the difference that there are no non-Europeans in the draw? I, I think I'm going to feel it only when I really see the draw and when you realize that it 
it really is becoming regional. Right now, I still don't feel it. It's still not, it does, still doesn't feel real. And to be honest, the field is so strong because no one could play. So it definitely being around here definitely doesn't feel like you're pay, playing an international event. So it doesn't feel like a regional thing. It feels actually feels like a way bigger tournament than it is if you see the, the players just walking around. Uh, the, I'm saying Ash Bartley had to pull out of uh, the US Open. I don't know if you know that. So I'm just wondering, how do you think people are going to start viewing the slams, whether as a player or as a fan, when, when big names aren't able to show up for different reasons that are not related to the typical like, injury or something? Um, how, how do you see that? Well, I don't, think, I don't think anything is normal these days, whether it's a, a Grand Slam or any other job or any other profession in the world. Nothing is back to normal yet. And I don't think we can or should expect tennis to be with full draws or with, like you said, not being regional and having all the players everywhere in the world. But we are trying our best to really just bring the sport back and yeah like i said make it possible and we should be grateful that it can happen in the first place and yes some players will be out but on the other hand some players will be out for many different reasons and yeah let's not look for perfection but let's just really be grateful for what we have right now